All right, everybody, welcome to America's Credit Union Museum. My name is Isaiah. I'm your host. Today, we are here at America's Credit Union Museum in Manchester, New Hampshire, and we are unveiling Herstory. Herstory is the history of the pioneer women in the credit union movement, and we have a room full of people here. Thank you to all the folks. I understand we've got thousands of people watching us on YouTube all across the country. Thank you for checking in. If you've never been to America's Credit Union Museum, and you're in the credit union industry, you should do yourself a favor and come here. The rich history of this museum is spectacular, and what we unveil with Herstory is a whole nother level of amazing. So I wanted to start off by talking with uh, Nathan Saller. Nathan is the CEO of Bellwether Credit Union right here in Manchester, New Hampshire, and he's also the chairman of the board for the museum. Talk about what this Herstory exhibit means to you and everyone who's been here. This is an amazing day, very special day. Uh, the genesis for this idea was years in the making. Uh, the, we've been working on it all year. There's so many stories of so many incredible women that we need to capture and preserve. And we've been able to start our journey on doing that. This is we, what we learned is we're just scratching the surface on telling these wonderful stories. But this is a day where there's a lot of celebration a lot of hard work has gone into it, and we're just excited to, to, to be a part of it and share it with so many women that have done amazing things for the movement and for our members. Well, last night we had a really cool uh, dinner. We all got together. And so if you've never been to Manchester, New Hampshire, there's rich history up here. Along the river, there's all of these giant mill buildings, and they're all, they've all been renovated. Give me a little history. I think you were the one that brought up the rich history of the building we were in and how it ties into the museum and how it ties into the women who we are honoring for Herstory. Talk a little bit about that, Nathan. So in the late 1800s, early 1900s, Manchester was a mill town, produced uh, cotton for the world, essentially. And uh, part of the labor force were immigrants coming down from Quebec, Canada. They didn't speak the language, they had different customs. And because of that, they couldn't get access to affordable financial services. And so they would work in the mills and walk, walk across the bridge and up to the west side of Manchester. And the very first credit union was on the first floor of the building that we're in today. And they would drop, they would stop by and put their dimes and nickels uh, into uh, basically uh, uh, someone's house, someone's front parlor. And there was a ledger and, and that was how the credit union movement started is right here. People not able to access the conventional banking system and uh, that's what started credit unions. That's still the credit union story today, which is just amazing. So and that's the ground that we're standing on now with America's Credit Union. We're talking with Nathan Saller. He is the CEO of Bellwether Credit Union right here in Manchester and also the uh, chairman of the board for the America's Credit Union Museum. Herstory has been revealed. Herstory is the amazing history of the pioneer women in the credit union movement. And we're going to talk with uh, Stephanie Smith and then we're going to throw it to you because you have a very exciting ceremony we're going to recognize all of these women here today how cool is that it is very cool right. we're, we're excited this is a very very special day and uh glad to be sharing it with all of you online excellent well thank you very much appreciate right. some time we're going to send it back to you in a few minutes right. but again welcome here to america's credit union museum we've got a lot of cool people joining us i want to bring stephanie smith up stephanie's so busy she's talking to everybody all the time if Nathan can bring her over. Nathan, Stephanie, come on up. There we go. Stephanie's always talking to people. Come on over. This is Stephanie Smith. She is the executive director of America's Credit Union Museum, and she is the mind behind Herstory. Herstory, again, for those of you watching, we've got thousands of people watching us on YouTube, by the way. Don't be nervous. That's so Don't be nervous. Not at all. Good. Uh, Herstory is the history of the pioneer women in the credit union industry, and that is what we're doing here today. We're celebrating that. So Stephanie, talk about the Herstory exhibit and, and what it means to you. We are so excited to celebrate these amazing women in the movement. Um, this has been a year-long project to, to shine a light on the pioneers and the torchbearers and the change makers of the movement, the women that have been there since day one. And we're just absolutely thrilled to share their stories and to inspire others. Um, those of us that have received the nominations have been inspired and we just want to share that with everybody. You had over 130 women that were nominated. When you started this, you told me last night, you thought, well, we'll get a handful. How was that? Yeah, so when we 
sort of created this experiment. We said we'd do 12 women, four from each time period, and we appealed to the credit union industry as a whole to, to share stories of the women within their credit unions, and the, the industry delivered, and over 130 women were nominated. Many of the women that are being inducted today were nominated multiple times, and we realized rather quickly that this couldn't be a one and done. We were going to have to make this an annual event. So we're, we're thrilled to, to expand on the exhibit that we have today. And all the folks watching, thank you, of course, for tuning in on YouTube to watch this. Everybody out there in the credit union industry, if you've never been to America's Credit Union in Manchester, New Hampshire, make it a point. Bring your colleagues. Bring your young professionals. Bring the people inside your world so you can learn the rich history of credit unions and, more importantly, now see what herstory is all about. And, again, herstory is the history of the pioneer women in the credit union movement. You've got some really powerful women coming up here to uh, receive these these awards. How do you feel today? I am absolutely honored and humbled that these amazing, busy women in the credit union space took time out of their schedules to be here for us to shine a light on them. Um, it, it proves their commitment to the museum and the history of the movement, and I could not be happier to have them all in this space. And make sure if you go online, you, you definitely want to go take a look at the website for the entire uh, museum and really dial into what herstory is all about. This is very powerful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're going to be doing some fun things. So we're actually going to, we've got a really nice video that we put together for all of you watching on YouTube. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Isaiah with the Cooperative Credit Union Association. Proud to be here as your host to begin this amazing day for herstory the history of the pioneer women in the credit union movement here at America's Credit Union Museum. We're going to throw it back to you in the booth because we've got a really cool video to highlight herstory. Back to you.
and hear the energy that's uh, here today for a great cause. This is something that uh, is very, very exciting. As chairman of America's Credit Union Museum, it's my honor and privilege to welcome all of you here today for a very, very special day. Uh, I want to welcome all of those people attending online. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, this is an exciting day, years in the making. America's Credit Union Museum is all about capturing stories, capturing stories of credit unions, the difference that they make in people's lives. But it's also about capturing the stories of the people that are the difference makers and the change makers. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. Uh, this idea of her story was literally years in the making. The genesis of capturing stories of incredible women that have done incredible things started a number of years ago. And we are absolutely thrilled that we are here today to unveil this and talk about the stories of the women that we're honoring today. Um, as we get started, I wanted to start with a few acknowledgments. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, NCUA Vice Chairman Kyle Hoffman. Thank you so much for being here. I'd also like to uh, welcome Dan Mica, former President and CEO of. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also want to acknowledge our museum board. We have just an incredible board of directors. When they heard about this concept and this idea, they were fully on board, fully supported. And we have uh, an incredible board. We've got a number of board members with us this morning. Um, I just want to acknowledge the, the board members in the room. Christy Arrington, a vice chair. Ron McLean, treasurer. Marita Miller, our secretary. Paul Gentile, immediate past chair. Tom Payne. Todd Mason, <laughs> Mary Patu, <laughs> and Michael Ray. <laughs> we have a number of board members that couldn't join us this morning, but they're definitely here in spirit and uh, offer their well wishes to all of us. Uh, I'd also like to just take a moment and thank our sponsors. As you know, it takes financial support to get something like this off the ground. And this project would not have been able to, to even be possible without the support of so many credit union, credit union partners. And I'd like to especially thank our lead donors this morning, uh, the Cooperative Credit Union Association, the Illinois Credit Union League, and PSC. Finally, to our honorees, your family, friends, and supporters, uh, thank you for your tire tireless commitment to the Kremlin movement, to our members, for being just an inspiration for so many of us, and for the future generation of Kremlin, because this is what it's really all about, is capturing your stories, inspiring those of us that are coming behind, to dream big and to try to do more. So thank you so much. At this time, it's my uh, pleasure and honor to introduce Stephanie Smith, our executive director. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, Stephanie is a staff of one. <laughs> so, as executive director, she does fundraising, she plans exhibits, she takes up the trash, whatever is required. And this has literally been a labor of love for Stephanie. She put countless hours, so many details that have come into it today, and I just want to thank her and welcome her up. Me, you know that I'm a fire. I'm a fire when I'm happy, I'm 
if I look sad, if I look tired, <laughs> I cry. <laughs> <laughs> puppy commercial. Um, and I cry with this exhibit. Um, this exhibit has moved into tears multiple times. Um, a little bit of the backstory and how we got here. Like Nathan said, we, we recognized that it was time for us to do an exhibit that featured the women of the movement. And it was time to shine a light on exactly what they've been doing since day one. Uh, we all know the story of Attorney Guadalajara who opened his house to the first members of St. Marie's Bay. But what maybe you don't know is his wife was here every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and what she did, and I think it's particularly important to point out, she started the first credit union savings account for children. The children <laughs> since day one, women have had a important role in what we do. And I'm thrilled to share with you the stories of these 20 women that we've inducted into the first three exhibit here at the museum. When we started the project, I went to the board and said, let's do this exhibit. Let's do 12 women, four from the pioneer era, four from the torch bearer, and four from the chain trainers. And we'll have 12 women, and we'll say happy anniversary, and we'll go home at the end of the day. And we realized rather quickly that we didn't think big enough. Because the women that we were talking about were the big thinkers of the movement. And the, the momentum of the legacies that you women have brought to the museum, to the movement, has inspired me since I took on this project. Um, for those of you that are joining us today for the first time, you will see that the inductees all have a dragonfly pin. I was just gifted a pin um, as well. I feel a little bit of imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful and I like shiny things. <laughs> I don't wear it with pride. And those pins are dragonflies. And the symbolism of a dragonfly is that to me, you see dragonflies when the ecosystem is working the way it's supposed to. And these women are doing what they're supposed to be doing out in the movement. And I think that those are the inspiring stories that we need to capture here at the museum. We reached out to everybody at GAC and said, please tell us about the women in your readings that inspired you. And again, we thought we'd get 12 people. And we had over 130 nominees. 130 people took the time to tell us a story of a woman that inspires them. And I can tell you that the group that is in front of you today, multiple people took time tell us your amazing stories. So um, I'm thrilled that you are all here. I know that you're all busy, so the fact that you all took time to come to the museum, to come to Manchester, New Hampshire, where it all started, I am honored and I am humbled by that. So thank you for coming. We are going to move forward, and next year we will induct more women into the history of faith. And we're going to keep going until we have all the stories that we need to capture here. So, you know, if you know a woman that is not sitting here in the front and they have an inspiring story, please nominate them, and let's do this again next year. <laughs> I knew that I could not bring all of you to Manchester, New Hampshire without giving you a, an opportunity to, to address your adoring public. <laughs> so I have, um, Julie Ferguson had said to me, if there's something you need, please let me know. And that's probably the last time she'll ever do that. <laughs> um, so Julie has agreed to come up here to sort of help us navigate um, introducing each of you and giving you an opportunity to speak to the group. So welcome to <laughs> Helping um, at the door. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would have this honor to help recognize all of you today. And um, wow, I'm getting emotional already. I, um, I was thrilled when she asked me. I was honored and terrified because thrilled and honored because look who's in the audience. Yeah. Terrified because. Look. <laughs> 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 what I came to believe, though, was that I am here really to represent all of the employees out there that are doing their absolute best 
to serve members with exceptional service, the best member experience. And so I feel like I represent everybody out there. Um, I'm going to tell you one story, and then I'm going to turn it over, um, and we're going to hear her stories, segments of all of her stories. Um, and the story I want to tell is back, I'm going to throw it back to the 1990s, early 1990s. I was working at a branch at First Tech Federal Credit Union in the Pacific Northwest, beautiful Pacific Northwest, and I was asked to be on a chapter board for the Oregon Credit Union League. And um, I learned quickly what that was. I came in in the midst of them planning a weekend at the Oregon Coast, a workshop. And a couple board members knew a speaker and her name and we hired her was Carol Shillius. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And we went to the beach, and I was mostly excited at this point because I had never been on a paid business trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were ready to spend the night in a hotel. But I remember their parents were like, yeah. And I think I even ordered a glass of wine. <laughs> um, and so Carol comes in, much as she is today, a vision of color from head to toe. And she was um, doing a lot of work in Africa. And so she brought fabrics with her. So she took our boring conference room and put fabrics all over the room. And Carol then went on to talk with us about passion and purpose and value. And it was the first time I was new in my, because it's early 90s, and I still feel pretty young, um, but it was the first time that I had been to a meeting, a training that was not focused on compliance. <laughs> those words, it was the first time I understood who I was working for. And not that First Tech did a bad job, they did a great job, but back then we didn't talk about as much of that with the onboarding process. You learned how to be a teller, and you got to it. And you bet, did I go back and do a better job serving my members? I sure tried, and I sure try every day in what I'm doing, and that was when I've been in the industry now for over 30 years. So, thank you, Carol. out there that's doing the good work is because I have that story. I have stories about Denise. I have stories about Gigi. I have stories about Lois who's about to climb a huge mountain. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? I have this big, beautiful collection of stories. And so my question to you is, raise your hand high. Do you also have a big, beautiful collection of stories of these 20 women? Like, you have stories about the impact. Yes, we all have stories. And so when you think about what this means today, you think, okay, let's roll across the United States, right? All the people that you have touched and you have taught, and they're all raising their hands so high saying, yes, yes, they have made such an impact. I'm going global, Sue. I'm going global because the women and the, what you have done, what Lois has done, what, what all of you have done for, and I'm pointing, and I'm not supposed to point when you're speaking, is <laughs> <laughs> um, significant. And so I think I can speak from for all of us people that I feel like represent today and I'm going to speak. Um, next, we are going to hear some of her story. And I'm going to start with Denise Weinworth because Denise, <laughs> she didn't ask me to go first. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Denise earned her 
early on in my career taught me to be a, um, to take risks and to say, heck, kind of that word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My story, my story that I've never told before because I do like small stories. And so I was a middle child, and growing up, I was always seeking attention. You know, not. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the woman who really had an impact on me was my nana. It's my dad's grandma. And my dad's mom, my grandma, we both had. And I was her favorite. You can ask my sister. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was in eighth grade, she was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor, which eventually made her blind, and then she was going to die. And knowing that, I watched her just instead of like, oh, poor me. She learned how to look like this blind person and she still kicked my butt at cribbage when she could barely see them. <laughs> and she was amazing. But when she knew she was going to die, she sat me down and she said, DC, I was going to say, don't call me that one. <laughs> <laughs> she said, God gives every child a gift. And then she pointed her finger at me. And she said, Your duty is to figure out what that gift is and give it back. And my gift from God is to be truly your compassion and commitment. And it is God given, truly. So I'm giving that back. You know what? I'm so happy to have that picture of the wall. I love it in person. Thank you for that beautiful photo. Well, I'm far from being done. So. <laughs> needs 
people who work hard, right? I mean, the first time I met Carol Chilios, I'm sorry, Carol. I got a story about all of you, but they don't have <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. It was two o'clock in the morning um, at CUNA uh, in December of 1983. And I was brand new at CUNA. And I thought I was doing the most important work because I was writing manuals. <laughs> and I'm there, and I'm working at 2 in the morning, and all of a sudden I hear the shuffle. And it's Carol putting up flyers at CUNA for the CUNA Foundation. And I thought, these are, this is my kind of people. You know? and, uh, and then, I mean, you just go on. And here's the thing about credit unions. I've learned this over the years. Uh, because I married somebody, well, first off, the other good thing to come out of Cuno was my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, the other good thing about, uh, about credit unions is that if you are willing to work hard, then you will get ahead. And, and if you look at, and the statistics bear this out, Lucy knows I love statistics. 50% of credit union CEOs are women. That's not an accident. Um, uh, only 3% of bank CEOs are women, right? Now, you can argue that you don't have enough women at the largest credit unions for working on it. But 50%? And, it's, and is it because credit unions say, we need women at the top? No, they just need people who work hard. And so everybody, I look around at all these people I've worked with, with the exception of Lily, I work with all of you, and I know staying ahead of you is tough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to the to all of you. My husband. Uh, I'd also like to thank the vice chairman for coming out for me because he pulled me out of retirement, and uh, the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say thank you to all of you, and uh, go crazy. <laughs> comments here because people ask me why why and my response and it's almost like a drop the mic I'm done is because I have to <laughs> there there are some of Mankus and all of the women that are here today we we just know we have to whether it was when we were young and we stood up for somebody that was a bully all right or that we stood against someone that was a bully, or as we got older, in my case, where I felt vulnerable because I was a female in a male environment, and I promised myself I would never be there again. And whether it was starting a company and saying, we've got to do this, and finding credit unions and knowing that those credit unions would become our life work. They would become about the people. And I had the wonderful opportunity to see the United States. And Sarah, you're right. There are a lot of women in credit unions. There are a lot of women who are retiring without plans. There are a lot of women that are widows that won't be able to survive. And that's who we started to stand for. We started to stand for this community of people that needed a support system. And these, as that expanded, that was the US, and then World Council gave me the opportunity to see it on a global basis. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night in Africa and seeing Stella um, 
and seeing what she was doing with the children with AIDS, and realizing there, but for the grace of God, go I. There's a responsibility there, and that responsibility is not something that we we shug and or we shrug away. It's really something that we go home with. And I remember waking up and hitting Michael and saying, <laughs> you know, what are we going to do? And those are those moments that change your life. And then I look at our grandchildren and I think about their futures and the legacy that we're going to leave them. It's a responsibility. And I look at that and I take that seriously and I know that that means we have to use our voice. That we have to be strong. We have to be the trees that these maple leaves come from. We have to have strong roots and we have to stand up and we have to build the systems that will ensure next generation, okay, all generations have access to financial democracy. So I'm not very funny. In fact, I find myself now going, oh gosh, that's too serious. <laughs> <laughs> but there is such passion here. And when you look at the Global Women's Leadership Network and you look at all of the people in this room that were part of that, and you look at the God awful pink ties. <laughs> and I said, yes, it was obnoxious, but when you stood on the stage, you knew you were an ally. Right? And that's what we are. We're allies to people. And when I think about the fact of what it's going to look like as we go forward, my one of my proudest moments, Joanne was there. And somebody came up, Joanne. And she said to me, oh, you're Sus, you're Brandy's mom. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah. <laughs> and I've never let y'all forget it. That was a moment. And that's the inspiration that I am this with. And that's it. We've got a whole generation of women, of men, of diverse backgrounds, cultures, demographics, and it's our voices that will push them forward. So I am honored, Stephanie. I am humble. Um, this is an amazing, amazing moment. So thank you very much. <laughs> exciting to share, um, only to say that um, I am so deeply honored and humbled to be up here today amongst these women who I have considered to be mentors and whom I admire so greatly, and to just be in their space makes me feel almost overwhelmed, right? Like I almost can't even capture the feeling and the essence of what that means to me. Um, you know, over the years, I have served on various um, boards and committees, um, whether I um, was a, a faculty member at Southwest Student Management School or uh, helped um, co-facilitate our Principles and Philosophy workshop at uh, the Cornerstone League, helping develop the um, Northwest, uh, I'm sorry, not Northwest, the North Texas Sister Society, the GWRA, um, my greatest work, for, for lack of a better word, because it takes a village, certainly not anything I've done alone, 
is this new organization that I am very proud of that I want to share with you for just a second in that um, we've created an organization called PULA. It's the Credit Union Women's Leadership Alliance. There are 12 uh, founders who are women who run small credit unions. Maria is a co-founder as well. We have a ton of organizational support from the industry, and, but um, we just found it critically important to provide a platform and a voice for these women who run smaller credit unions. Because guess what? Smaller credit unions are critical to the ecosystem of, of what's happening in credit unions. In the movement, in our industry, whatever you want to call it, we're critically important. And mentioned earlier, primarily run by women. And so we have created a platform that is so, we just had our first in-person conference and it was amazing. Just hear, hearing the stories that were raw and real around what do we need to do to help us get to the next level. It's all around sustainability so that we're here, right, in the future. So very excited about that endeavor. It has become, um, it's a lot of work, but it has become uh, a labor of love, which I heard earlier as well, um, and certainly worthy, worthy of, of all of our attention and time. So I would invite you to check out Pula.com. Not that that's a commercial, but <laughs> I just have to. I have this platform and I decide to share. I also need to um, take a moment to thank my credit union board and my team members because without their support, um, I would not be able to, to be able to do what I do and get out and play and work hard in credit union life. And so thank you for that. They've been supportive since day one. I want to thank um, my kids, Ashley and Cameron. And Cameron is actually here as my guest because apparently he nominated me for this very <laughs> long <laughs> Also, works for Cravings at this camera. And she said, I said, Well, actually, do you want to come in? She's like, Are you kidding? That did not sound like fun to her at all. <laughs> she actually said, Peace out. No, she didn't say that. But she might have been her inside voice. But I feel like someday she'll start really, um, it, it will come to a realization of what a great, wonderful space this is. In. This is to work and grow up in, and I hope that she takes the same path that Cameron, you know, because honestly, um, for a long time, I felt a lot of guilt about them probably not spending as much, having as much mommy time, right, because I was out doing all this other stuff. And so the fact that they are in our movement makes me extremely proud. And I have such a great team back at my credit union and a lot of them have been with me for 20 plus years. And I feel like that is such a symbol of, um, of encouraging your folks to, to um, be, you know, be engaged, give back, and do whatever you need to do to keep people and your staff motivated. And I'd like to think that some of them um, have aspirations to be a CEO someday too. And if they don't, that's okay too. My main thing is to stay and give back to your communities and do the great right work. Rob asked, so you know, 
what does that mean? And I said, wow, this is really interesting business model, financial cooperatives. And I go, they kind of sound like a cult, though. <laughs> But I, I want to tell you that the World Council, if you're not familiar with the World Council of Credit Unions, it, they make the credit union choice available to people in countries around the world. So if you don't know about them, one more. Um, next, California and Nevada credit unions um, went there, and um, Diana Dijkstra is the epitome of what a league has been about all these years. She fights to reduce the unnecessary <laughs> duplication of the system. She fights to collaborate on that. And I thank you so much for your example to me. Um, while I was at the California Nevada Credit Union release, I met Sarah Kinsane. And uh, it, it, it's just, just fantastic. Uh, the league was trying to get uh, credit unions to think about marketing and collaborating and in marketing. And part of the uh, barrier we found was that when we get creating people together, we'll talk about new marketing ideas. Uh, we tended to speak to ourselves. It's like, oh, well, you know, the, I like that ad <coughs> as opposed to who we are doing it. So, Sarah, leave it to Sarah. Goes, it's about serving the underserved and the over tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, I ended up at the National Association for State Credit Union Supervisors. And I know uh, compliance is very burdensome, but please remember that regulators and credit union people actually are, have the same goal. It's like doing right by consumers. So please hug a regulator. <laughs> Susan Mitchell, etc., the National Credit Foundation, 
I remember being trained by those kids. I remember sitting at the table with Queen Lucy Ito, <laughs> watching these other ladies getting awards. I remember watching Maria in her red dress. I remember <laughs> being on the wall with these ladies. <laughs> it is amazing, just truly amazing. Um, Diana Dykstra has been the guiding light for me on being a person who doesn't accept ordinary. So thank you, Diana. Um, I am just amazed. And my sister Frida, my, my other Shiro, who, who flew from Anchorage to San Antonio to make sure my mother got here on time. Uh -huh. <laughs> We have an amazing industry. Um, I started November 6, 1992, looking for a small credit company called Credit Resources and Insurance Marketing Firm. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into, and I'm so glad that I stayed. AACUC uh, allowed me to do a lot of things, and um, the most important thing is to do for others what we've done for me. So many of those giants of the original ACC board, uh, Corey and Pete Career, Michael Hale, uh, L. Dr. Smith, Rita Hayes, and all of these people who, if I forgot your name, because I'm up here, but, <laughs> um, but it's so important for us to give back. And I'm looking at Tracy Jackson, who hated being told by Bert J. Hatch Jr. that she had to come to these conferences, but she still came. And she's now the vice chair of ACC. <laughs> At Resource One, great news with Mary Spuckers, CEO, and just this wonderful stuff, right? And then you got Latanya Allen, who's now the director at her great union. <laughs> so, Michael Way, thank you for being the board member from ACC to represent the, at the museum. We appreciate you. And I want to get down and sit down because I want to hear what Marie has to say. <laughs> so is there a party after this? <laughs> That's what I'm known for, right? <laughs> never, never in my wildest dreams, and I do have wild dreams. <laughs> Never did I imagine that I was going to get to this point. Okay. <laughs> For those of you that are on live stream watching this, you don't know this, but there's the roll of toilet paper going on. <laughs> Apparently, none of us want to do or somebody said, can you pass the toilet <laughs> But I've had so much fun. You know, I never saw this uh, career as a destination. I just see it as a journey. To me, it's a journey that, you know, we just continue every single day. And uh, I've come, you know, many of you know my story. Um, you know, an immigrant. Okay. I've got to compose myself. <laughs> And uh, this is the, the American dream. This is realizing your American, American dream. When I saw my picture on that wall, I'm in a museum. <laughs> The, the journey that um, I'm following, that I've been following, is uh, working with people. You know, whether it will be my colleagues, my peers. Um, you know, doing things in our communities or doing things in our industry by serving on the boards, by serving on the committees, by being founders. That's Kula, uh, Nalka, the, the Latino group that we founded, and then just the service that we give. You know, and getting to know a lot of you. Uh, when I saw the names of the women that are being represented here, 
Um, I hear most of you, and I've done work with most of you. And this is nationwide, and even worldwide. I'm just so excited because uh, my staff has really gotten me here. I don't think I would have been here without my staff. <laughs> My family. Uh, so today is my daughter's birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Adriana. <laughs> when I got that girl who asked me board, it was my mom's birthday. Oh. <laughs> you know, what else can I ask? <laughs> but I'm so thankful. Uh, we've done so much work at my credit union. Uh, a lot of work with the underserved. And uh, to me, you know, there's, there's a group out there that we need to be servicing. And that is the underserved. But it's also the Hispanic community. And if you're not serving them, we're missing out on it. So I, I'm going to challenge y'all. Anybody that's here, anybody that's on live stream, we need to be serving that group. And if you're not doing it, we'll show you how to do it. <laughs> but thank you to my staff, my board, uh, my family, my husband, my kids. You know, y'all are amazing. And thank you to each of you women. Y'all are amazing. You inspire me. Reading your stories, just another thing in my list to keep on doing what I've been doing for, for many years. And I love y'all. <laughs>
again, the theme of love is that Bill Cheney approached me about 10 months after I left the regulatory agency and said, PG, there's an opportunity to run the National Capital Foundation. And honestly, I had it up to here. Um, really to to think about love. And I'm trying to weave all of the stories of my beautiful colleagues here today. But this is about loving each other. This is about loving people regardless of what background they're from, their sexual orientation, their gender, um, etc. Et and so my um, story of love is that we stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> Do you want her to use this one instead? Um, but just place it there. Just just it just just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 So, two quotes for you. Again, I think we stand on the shoulders of giants. When Stephanie called me, I said, Oh my goodness. And I cannot believe that Louise Herring is also a part of this group because Bill, my dear friend Bill, I talk about Louise Herring all the time. I talk to her all the time. And so there's a surreal quality to today. Um, last but not least, to pick up on Denise's comments, and I'm going to quote one of my favorite wise sages, the sage Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Um, when I first, um, I took the job at the corporate central in Washington state because I had to pay my rent. <laughs> it was a momentous paying of rent uh, in 1934 when I started. <laughs> uh, what, what I um, realized was the, the word passion. And I don't think I had really ever understood what that meant. And my boss called me into his office one day and he said, Carol, you're a lousy secretary. And it was Rex Tipton. And I said, well, you're a, you're a lousy boss, so I guess we agree on something. <laughs> um, if, if you don't know me, uh, Rebel is my middle name. And uh, he said, he gave me a gift. He sent me around to every department in the credit union. And I found out why the tellers take breaks when certain members come in the front door. <laughs> I cried my way through member stories in collections. Um, and then the manager said, Carol, those are the same stories they've been telling for 20 years. <laughs> I never balanced my checkbook. So um, accounting was definitely not uh, my area of expertise. And I ended up working uh, in the central liquidity facility back in the 70s when, when the corporate central system was just getting started. Because what would happen is that people would come to me and they would say, Carol, do you know of a credit union that needs money? Do you know of a credit union that has extra money? And so I became a facilitator of the money. And, and people would, I would connect up people. So I became a connector which was really interesting in the cooperative uh, nature of credit unions. Uh, so when it came time to build the central liquidity facility, my boss um, said, you're the right person, Carol. And so he would send me out this little kid with a mini skirt and high heels to talk to these big wig credit union CEOs and convince them to give money. Uh, it was a real eye opener. So I had some amazing mentors. Uh, then I was stolen away by um, the league, the state league uh, 
twisted my arm and that's when I did the presentations that you're talking about. I can't remember you believe the believe that you remember those. Wow. I, I did one presentation. I remember I went to Goodwill and I dressed up uh, in clothing from Goodwill because they wanted me to do dress for success. You know, Carol, who dress dress for success. And so I dressed up in Goodwill clothing and put uh, tags, hid them in all the clothing, and and then I had I walked in chewing gum and I was late to a conference and. And I noticed before I began speaking that a couple of women left the conference before I even got started. And I found out at the break that they thought I was the real deal. And they said, we are not listening to this woman. She's chewing gum. She was late. She looks like a, a devil. She's dressed so poorly. And um, so they found out at, new, at, at the break that um, the, the whole point of the presentation was to have people tell me what to do differently. So they had to redress me and 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 so we had a lot of fun um, so that was my my opening to training and I became uh, passionate about training uh, fast forward CUNA called me and uh, said Carol we want you to come to CUNA and uh, we want you to run this thing called a, a credit union foundation CUNA foundation they didn't have a full-time director Tony Schumacher from World Council was working in it part-time and they said Carol you're going to run the CUNA foundation and I sat in Jim Williams' office with Russ Notar, and Russ Notar um, would explain what's going on, and and we agreed that I would become the director. And so I shook Jim Williams' hand, and then he left. And Russ Notar said, "Oh, and by the way, you'll also be running the National Credit Union Roundtable." And I said, "What's the National Credit Union Roundtable?" And he explained it was the top hundred credit unions. It was a think tank. And I said, well then, and I sat back down in my chair. I said, then I guess we'll be renegotiating my salary. <laughs> uh, I had to reassure Jim Williams that I would not burn my bra, um, uh, but I did get to meet the architect of the building in Madison. And uh, he said, I said, you, I have you to thank for the beautiful offices that we have. And he said, oh, uh, where, where are you located? I said, well, I'm on the fourth floor, which was the executive floor, only woman. Uh, people used to come to my office to watch the rug that I had bought grow because they thought it was I was watering it. There was one of those rag rugs. Um, so um, he said, uh, well, where are you on the fourth floor? And I said, well, I'm, I'm uh, next to Jim Williams. And he said, oh, you sit outside of Jim Williams' office. I said, no, I actually have the office next to Jim Williams. He said, it's going to take me a long time to get the foot out of my mouth. <laughs> because they weren't used to having women in executive positions. So, um, you know, I think they're, um, that exposed me to Lucy Edo because I got a chance to work with Credit Unions internationally. And um, uh, the women in this room have been amazing carriers of the vision. And I, there are three things that I noticed as I listened to all of you speak that we have in common. And I just want to celebrate those three things uh, to, to wrap this up. It, one of our early our early founders, and I think it was Bergen Grin, not Filene, who said, keep purpose constant. This group of women, despite the adversity, are fearless about keeping purpose constant. You know what it is to be directed. You know where you're headed. And, and you keep that purpose constant you know, despite any adversity that you might have. It reminds me of Sister Marie McLaughlin in South Africa, who was a nun who, during apartheid, actually got 10 women's sewing circles together and connected them with internet, with computers, before the government even knew that there was a, a, a mixing of black and white sewing circles of women. And in her, in her desire, and I, I love when you said curiosity, the curiosity, she hid in the trunk of a car to go to a credit union meeting in order to learn how to do her job more effectively. That is fearless. Um, and, and so that binds all of us is that lack of uh, lack of fear. Um, Lois climbing the mountain in order to uh, help credit unions build 
a center, a training center is, is a powerful direction that she's going to the top, Lois, to the top. Um, when um, uh, I must say that I, I was not fearless in the face of some challenges when we started our school for street children in West Africa, um, because I did escape when Al Qaeda came in and was targeting us because we had a girls school. Um, next year, next year, we're moving operations to Senegal where we'll start a training center to help young people get access to small business incubators to help them be sustainable in the long run. And it's through the credit union system that I'm working to help make that happen. Um, Uh, the second thing is that you are all, we are all about possibilities. There's the possibilities. It's not, you know, in the face of, of, of obstacles and limitations, uh, we all see possibilities. Uh, when we first started the school in Mali, uh, the government said, it'll never work. These are ignorant street kids. And Kaba, who was the CEO of the credit union with whom I worked, uh, said to me, um, you know, we need to we need to do something. We're driving down the road in Bamako and uh, we come to a stop sign and the car is surrounded by young girls begging. And I roll down the window to give a little gift out and uh, Kaba elbows me for the 50 millionth time and says, cut that out. You're only creating dependency. And I said, well, what can we do? How can we make this sustainable and help them to help themselves in the credit union philosophy? where they're not handing out, they're, they're dependent on people giving them food. And she said, well, then if you think we can do uh, something, why don't we start a school? And the credit union will help sponsor it and we'll, we'll help these girls get started. And I said, I don't know anything about starting a school. Do you? She said, I don't know. She said, since when has lack of knowledge ever stopped us from achieving something? <laughs> And so we, we built this school and had uh, very small, because small is beautiful, 10 girls that we took off the streets. And here's a 13-year-old child with a rag around her waist, no shoes, guiding her blind uncle around the street, hoping to get food to send back to the village. And also had to sweep up at the end of the day at the school. We taught sewing, fabric wax stamping, and beading. And Asa standing at the, uh, she's gathering all the beads and separating that have fallen on the floor and separating them out into their different colored bins. And I'm looking at this bowl of beads thinking, oh my God, she's going to be there for days. And I said to her, Asa, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm the youngest. I sweep up. We have all these beads. We need to separate them out into different colors. And I said, how long is that going to take you? And she just rolled her eyes and said, days. I said, I want you to look at that bag of beads and I want you to visualize something out of them. She looked at the box. She looked back up at me and she immediately said, could I make a necklace? And I said, what do you think? And she said, I think that would be a great idea. I said, now I want you to visualize a necklace and tomorrow you tell me what your design is. So Asa created this necklace that had a cascade of beads of different lengths with a little African beads on the side. And she come to the center and she holds it up and she, she points at herself and she holds it up and I nodded my head. Eddie Bauer in Seattle, Washington ordered 1,500 of them. I asked at the end of the project, um, did you like this activity and do you want to do it again? And they said, hell no. <laughs> If I see another bead, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> so um, um, the challenge is there, but, but what we realize is that where others see obstacles and limitations, these children without education had possibilities, and that's what you women are all creating, are possibilities as mentors. Um, the, the last thing I want to just say is that um, I think this group of women we don't self-promote. And so um, it's about service above self. And so what I am honored to be uh, recognized, while I'm very honored to be recognized, uh, my ego thanks you for this honor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are you in?
wasn't fired? <laughs> yes. How can you not be? And what's great is that, you know, we can all be these powerhouses. Can I say that? Like, really, I think, I think you're in the center and then the ripple effect goes on and on. And we all, all of you out there watching live, all of us in the room can continue to be inspired and make changes and do the impossible or what we think when we have obstacles, we can overcome them. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to Stephanie. Um, the last thing I just want to say is uh, really, and I'm speaking, I think, from all of us out there watching across our country, across our world. And I just want to say thank you for leading with such heart. I was the one crying over in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's make this official. Let's officially induct these women into the history exhibit. Um, we're going to present these women with a plaque that they can take back with them. It's just a small token of you know all of the, that this represents. Um, we're going to call each of the women up, as well as the people that are representing the women that can't be here today. I'm gonna ask you to hold your applause to the end and we're gonna give you a great photo opportunity with these powerful women at the front of the room. So Nathan, if you could help me please. And we're gonna go alphabetical cause I like symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Bang. Oh, you guys follow instructions really good. <laughs> Diana Dykstra. Elizabeth Sis Hamilton is represented by um, CEO of her credit union, Sam. Are you here? Sam, where are you? I guess. Okay, oh, there you are. <laughs> Come on up. Louise Herring, represented by the Herring family. Bill Herring. No, come on, people. We have rules here. <laughs> All right, I'll go sit down. But, you know, I, I guess when you're representing the mother of the credit union movement, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rashara Rosie Holub cannot be here because she lives in Florida and her flight was canceled. Um, if you have electricity, Rosie, we love you and we would love to see you, um, but we will get your plaque to you. Gigi Highland. <laughs> Lucy Ito. Lois Kitch is um, in Africa, gonna hike Mount Kilimanjaro. Michael Ray, would you accept the plaque on her behalf? <clears throat> Harriet May could not be here. She wishes that she could be, but we will get her plaque to her as well. Maria Martinez. Susan Mitchell. Lily New Farmer. Rose Nevener, represented by Tom Kane from the Illinois League. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna stop right here because I can feel the power behind me. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> We're nice anyway. Carol Shillias. Miriam Bellock, represented by her husband, Rusty. And last, but certainly not least, Denise Weimler. <laughs> <laughs> It is my pleasure to present to this group
the 2022 inductees to Credit Union Women Making History history. All right, and that was a spectacular presentation here at America's Credit Union Museum for the unveiling of Herstory. Um, welcome back to the, we'll call this the post show. This is the after show. It's like if you watch The Walking Dead, this is the, isn't the, the after show of that. It's the after shows they do. And this is a great chance for me. I wanted you. This is Julie Ferguson. And Julie just hosted, as you all witnessed out there, the Herstory unveiling and giving these powerful women their awards and inducting them into, let's call it the Hall of Fame. Julie, give me a little background on yourself, first of all, and then talk about what today meant to you. Okay. Um, I spent 16 years at First Tech Federal Credit Union and in 2009 started my own business and now help credit unions across the country um, with business development, sales, uh, member experience. And so I get to interact with a lot of frontline employees 
on helping members. And today, um, I think is a highlight, I don't know how it couldn't be, of my career. Um, so many of these women have impacted me significantly um, throughout my career of over 30 years now in the space. And it's such an honor to be here. And um, I'm not really sure. I, I think I need to decompress and think through what, what this all means. It inspires me, and I hope it inspires everyone out there to do more um, because anything is possible. You, you did a spectacular job up there, and you really talked from the heart. You got a little emotional at the end. I think we all did. I was in the back going, I'm not going to cry. You're, I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. Exactly. But that was really spectacular, and we got a chance to meet some really powerful women. Uh, th and thank you to everybody out there. There's hundreds of people watching. You did a great job. All these women, just talk about inspiring. I mean, the stories of all of these women, what they've done. And one of the things that I've been thinking about watching this, watching what you did, doing the podcast downstairs, what this means to the generations coming forward, the young professionals, the young women in the space. And, you know, talk about what you see as a vision of the next chapter for women in the credit union space. Great. Thank you. I think all of us that have been in the space for a while need to be deliberate about making time, right? Making time to mentor, to help, to create opportunities, um, to say yes. I mean, when Stephanie asked me to do this, honestly, the uh, fear, <laughs> right? like, who am I? That, And so I think we need to stop having that imposter syndrome and just dive in with confidence. And so I think spending time with the young people coming up and creating opportunities for them and then helping them say yes, yes, yes. Well, you did a great job. Congratulations. Thanks. Very, very cool. Absolutely. And for everybody watching, if you get a chance, make sure you take time and come here to America's Credit Union Museum in Manchester, New Hampshire. Not only will you learn so much about the credit union industry and its rich history, but now you'll have a chance to see herstory and what that means. And the way I've been describing it is herstory is the history of the pioneer women in the credit union industry. So thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. Great job. Let's mingle. Let's go some go see some people. We'll do another pan of the room and we'll wrap things up here. Thank you for watching. We're live at America's Credit Union Museum in Manchester, New Hampshire. And welcome to the world, herstory. Great fun. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.